Hello and welcome to the channel. This is Don Mecca. In today's video, Coker's Art's True Limits of Humanity, the final border we will never cross. If you're interested in these type of videos, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps this channel grow in the algorithm, so your support is appreciated. Now let's get right into the video. Is there a border we will never cross? Are there places we will never reach, no matter how hard we try? It turns out there are. Mm. Even with sci-fi technology, we are trapped in a limited pocket of the universe and the finite stuff within it. How much universe is there for us and how far can we go? Damn. Dun, 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 dun. Corker's Arts. If you look at the night sky, you might assume it will be there forever. Stars are born and die again in a cycle that feels endless. But it's not. Mm. That sucks. Take the Milky Way. Up to 200,000 light years in diameter, containing Ooh. some 100 to 400 billion stars. Insane, How many right? stars do you think are born here each year? Thousands? Millions? The answer is around three. <laughs> I did not expect it. I did not expect it to be such a low number. Oh my God. Three new stars per year. 95% of all the stars that will ever exist in the universe have already been born. Damn. And I thought we were just getting started with the universe. Oh. And we live at the tail end of the age of star formation. We are at the beginning of the end of the universe as we know it. The formation of new stars will continue to slow down. But there's more. It turns out that the universe is rushing away from us. The Milky Way is not oh, alone. No. Together with the Andromeda Galaxy and more than 50 dwarf galaxies, it forms the Local Group, a region of space about 10 million light years in diameter, our galactic neighborhood. Hundreds of galaxy groups like the Local Group make up the Laniakea supercluster, which itself is only one of a myriad of superclusters. Jeez. Look at all these super clusters. My goodness. And our little one was right there and it was 10 million light years. And look at all this now. <laughs> In total, there are around 2 trillion galaxies that make up the current observable universe. Two, two, 2 trillion galaxies. And inside each galaxy, there are billions of stars. Oh my lord. Unfortunately, even if we could travel at light speed, around 94% of the galaxies we can see are already unreachable for us forever. Already? Already? Let this number sink in for a moment. The simple fact that there's a limit for us and that there is so much universe that a human will never be able to touch is kind of frightening. Why are all of these galaxies out of reach already? Well, it all has to do with why there are galaxies in the first place, the Big Bang. We're simplifying here, but in a nutshell, about 10 to the power of minus 36 seconds after the Big Bang, the young universe was a very small bubble of energy. Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. wasn't completely uniform, though. Some parts of it were a tiny, tiny bit denser than others, which right, had right. massive consequences. In a process called cosmic inflation, the observable universe expanded rapidly from the size of a marble to trillions of kilometers in a trillionth of a second. <laughs> from the size of a marble, all that exists <laughs> came to existence from a, the size of a marble, size of a freaking marble. That was so fast that all those tiny differences in density were stretched from subatomic distances into galactic distances, Damn. which is why the whole universe consists of more and less dense regions. Pockets of the universe filled with a bit more stuff than the space around them. <laughs> After that short but powerful inflation ended, gravity began trying to pull everything back together. Inside the mm. denser pockets, gravity emerged victorious, and so over time, they grew into groups of galaxies like the one we live in today. Mm. Ah, 
that's how galaxies formed, okay. The local group is our pocket of the universe. But at larger scales outside the denser pockets, the expansion of space never stopped. This means that our local group is surrounded by a lot of stuff, but none of those structures and galaxies are gravitationally bound to us. The more the universe expands, the larger the distance between us and the other gravitational pockets. But no, everybody is rushing away from us. <laughs> oh, beyond our local group. Comes. Even worse for us, the expansion of the universe is accelerating. We don't know why this happens, so we came up with the concept of dark energy. You can imagine it like an invisible effect that speeds up the expansion of the universe. We'll explain these concepts in more detail in another video, though. For now, all you need to know is that the universe is expanding faster and faster. Isn't it so sad that humanity will never get to touch <laughs> all these faraway places? It's so, so sad because... And the thing about it, too, is, you know, there might be much more beyond what we could even see currently. So who knows if this is actually endless, <laughs> be like there is no borders or maybe you, the universe is on a curved space where you go in one direction forever. You end up back to where you started. <laughs> could that be it? <laughs> but uh, I'm fortunate that every second stars are dropping out of even our visible, observable universe. This expansion means that there's a cosmological horizon around us. Everything beyond it is traveling faster relative to us than the speed of light. Damn. So everything that passes the horizon is irretrievably out of reach forever, and we will never be able to interact with it again. In a sense, it's like a black hole's event horizon, but all around us. 94% of the galaxies we can see today have already passed it and are lost to us forever. Did you hear that? 94, 94, 94 freaking percent of the universe that we could see now is already beyond reach. Ugh. Wait, if we can't interact with them, how come we can still see them? Well, the way we're able to see something is via light. And although the speed of light is the fastest way to travel through the universe, it needs time to get from one place to another. Every second. <laughs> why, why, did that, why did that look like a little sperm? <laughs> light reaches us from trillions of galaxies that have passed the horizon because when their light was emitted, they were much closer to us. Mm. We are looking at their ancient past and see their ancient positions. So the observable universe is much larger than the universe we can actually interact with. Okay. In a sense, the universe is pulling off a great show for us, showing us things that are out of reach forever. It's like time traveling, time traveling into the past. <laughs> That's the gift of slow speed of light, but geez. We have no idea what these galaxies look like today, and we will never know. But we will be able to observe them for a long time as their light hits our telescopes. Interestingly, this means that currently the observable universe still appears to be growing as more and more light released by super distant galaxies billions of years ago is arriving at our doorsteps. Still, all the pockets of the universe outside the local group will one day pass our cosmological horizon. Once they do, their light won't be able to reach us anymore. And from our perspective, they will fade away into so, so sad. darkness. Every second of your life, 60,000 stars pass the horizon. <laughs> what? 60,000? 60, 60,000 60, pass beyond, oh, disappear. They disappear forever to us. 60,000 stars every second. Since you started watching this video, around 22 million stars have moved out of our reach forever. Ain't that insane? That is so, so sad. Okay, but if 94% of the observable universe is beyond the cosmic horizon and gone forever, that still leaves us with 6% that is technically in reach, which is still a ton of stuff. All the galaxy pockets that are less than 18 billion light years away. They are still moving away, but slow enough that we could physically reach them although the chances are shrinking with every second that passes. 
Everything that's more than around 5 million light years away is moving away from us. But the close So we have a 5 million light year radius that we could <laughs> we could travel to and it will move up and we'll have plenty of time, plenty of time to reach them and explore them. 5 million in all directions. That's a lot of stars still. So, you know what? It's still something at least. Closest galaxy groups are receding the slowest, so there is a time window to jump galaxy groups. The challenge is extreme though, even for type 3 civilizations. Even at the speed of light, a trip to the Maffei group, the closest pocket of galaxies outside the local group, would take 11 million years. <laughs> 11 freaking million years to travel to the next cluster of galaxies. And that's at freaking light speed. Yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> if some sort of super motivated, super advanced civilization takes this challenge on, its potential sphere of influence could expand to hundreds or thousands of galaxies. Although, as time passes and the universe grows, they would be separated forever. It's pretty safe to assume that humans will not make this journey, at least not with technologies that are even remotely on the horizon. For us, the local group is most likely the largest structure that we will ever be a part of. Just traveling between the stars would be an achievement of epic proportions. You hear that? Corcozites has no faith in humanity. <laughs> Corcozites feels like we'll never be able to jump galaxies or galaxy groups. And they might be right. They're probably right. I can't front. I can't front. <laughs> we would already be incredibly successful if we were to colonize our cosmic backyard, which accounts for 0 0.0000000001% of the observable universe. Insane. And you saw in that animation even went to the closest galaxy also, which is about to collide with the Milky Way. As dark energy pushes the rest of the universe away from us, the local group will become more tightly bound. All its galaxies, big and small, will merge together to form one giant elliptical galaxy with the unoriginal name Milkdromeda in a few billion years. <laughs> Milkdromeda! Wow! <laughs> this process might even smash huge gas clouds together and re-spark star formation for some time. Ooh. And this new light will be very welcome because at some point the galaxies outside Milkdromeda will be so far away that they become too faint to detect. Once this happens, no information outside of the local group will reach us ever again. Stop telling me all this bad news, Corcozarts. <laughs> the universe will recede from view. A being born in the far future in Milkdromeda will think that the universe consists of nothing but its own galaxy. Jeez, picture that. When they look far into empty space, they will only see more emptiness and darkness. They won't see cosmic background radiation, and they won't be able to learn about the Big Bang. They may have no way of knowing what we know today the nature of the expanding universe, when it began, and how it will end. They might think the universe is static and eternal. Milkdromeda will be an island in the darkness, slowly getting darker and darker. Still, what a sad story. With its trillion stars, the local group is certainly a big enough playground to entertain humanity for a while. After all, we still haven't figured out how to leave our solar system, and we have dozens of billions of years at the very least to explore our galaxy. That is if we don't destroy ourselves <laughs> before we get to that. But yeah, it's sad and unfortunate, but you know what? We should be happy that we've been able to be witness to what's out there and know what's out there. Because millions or billions of years into the future, they won't even be able to see what we see now, be able to look into the past the way we are able to. And we have the incredible luck to exist at the perfect moment in time to see not only our future, but also our most distant past just by looking into the night sky. As right. isolated as the local group is, it is our home. And it really is a spectacular place. Time for some behind the scenes. Okay, so that was the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Let me know if you have any comments about this. Do you think that having such a border, a border is inconsequential because most of the, the universe 
we would never be able to reach it, even if it was static with our current understanding that speed of light being the limit of travel, the cosmic speed limit of the universe. So does it even really matter if it takes billions of years traveling at light speed to reach <laughs> even a corner of it? Is it inconsequential anyways? Well, you let me know in the comments. But at least we have our gravitationally bound neighbors in our local group for a little while. And after that, of course, we have our milk dromeda, <laughs> milk dromeda combining and giving us tons of stars to explore. All right. See you in the next video. Don Mecca out.